Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, I'm going to be talking all about macro tracking. If you've heard about tracking macros and wondered, is that something I need to be doing? How does that help me lose weight? What do I even track? I got you. Today we're going to talk about what exactly are macros? What do I need to track? How to set my macros. By the end of this video, I'm going to give you a calorie calculator. You will know exactly how many calories you should be eating to lose weight. And then a little bit of nitty gritty, some stuff you need to know about using apps and weighing and measuring your food. So what are macronutrients? Macronutrients are those things we need in our diet in relatively large quantities, as opposed to micronutrients, which are like vitamins and minerals, for example. So there are three macronutrients and we call them macros for short. Protein, carbs, carbohydrates, and fat, okay? This is dietary fat, fat you eat, not like fat that's on your body, fat. These are the three macronutrients. They make up all the food you eat. There's also fiber. Okay, protein. Let's start there. Protein is the building block of your muscles. It's what's gonna help you build muscle and keep muscle, which is extremely important if you want to have a toned look. Something you need to know about protein is that there is four, there is, there are four calories per gram four calories per gram of protein, okay? Protein examples, we're talking any kind of meat, chicken, beef, pork, fish. There are um, non-animal protein sources as well. So we're talking about tofu, seitan, tempeh. I never know if I say that word right, seitan. Is that right? Maybe, maybe not. I don't eat it, but I know a lot of people do. Animal sources, non-animal sources, it doesn't matter as long as you get enough protein, okay? protein, that's four calories per gram. Carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are your body's preferred energy source. There are also four calories per gram of carbohydrate. Carbohydrates, rice, potatoes, beans, pasta, bread, all kinds of grains, did you know that vegetables are also a carbohydrate? Fruits are also a carbohydrate. These things are carbohydrates. There are four calories per gram. Dietary fat. Fat is important as well. It is important for your brain functioning, for regulating your hormones, and for vitamin absorption. Fat is a little bit different as far as calories. There are nine calories per gram of fat. So nine calories, these are more calorie dense, which is important to know as you um, are tracking your macros that you want to be a little more careful with the portion sizes of fats because a little bit more is actually a lot more calories. That's important to know. Ideas of fat sources, oils, nuts, seeds, nut butters, avocado. Okay, so what does all this have to do with weight loss? Then? If you add up the total number of calories you have from protein, carbs, and fats in your diet, you get your total calories. Does that make sense? Okay, protein plus carbs plus fat equals your total calories. So you could, and some people, many people do track total protein, total carbs, and total fats. They'll give themselves or have someone else give them targets to reach. You need X grams of protein and X grams of carbs and X grams of fat. And all of that together equals your total calories. So tracking your macros, tracking them individually is tracking your calories. I don't recommend you do this. I did used to do that. I do not do it anymore. And I don't suggest my clients track all three of these. Why? because you can actually track two and lose weight just as effectively. And who wants to do extra math? So what we know from research is that if you keep total calories in check and you get sufficient protein, the ratio of carbs and fats actually doesn't matter for fat loss. I'm talking really strange today. I keep saying words weird. Fat, not fat loss, <laughs> fat loss. It doesn't matter for fat loss. You can have more carbs, or more fats or an equal amount of both. But if you keep your calories in check and you get plenty of protein, you will still lose weight. So why track them if it doesn't really matter? 
And when I say it doesn't matter, it's not that it won't matter to you individually. You might prefer more fats. You might prefer more carbs. You might feel like you have more energy with more carbs, but you just plain out might like more fat better. In, in that way, it does matter, but you don't need to track them. You're gonna track your total calories. You're gonna track your grams of protein because that's important for you to build muscle and to maintain your muscle. And it's what the research shows us matters. So we're gonna have you track two numbers instead of tracking all three. So now you know what macros are, you know which ones you're gonna track. You're gonna track your protein and we're gonna track total calories. You're still gonna eat carbs and fats, you're just not going to track them. How do you know then how many calories you should eat? How do you know how many grams of protein you should eat? I'm gonna tell you. Now, I'm gonna give you a formula to use, but I want you to know that no matter what formula you are given, no matter what calculator it comes from or what coach it comes from, any formula you're given is just an estimate and then you adjust based on results. To do that, you need to be consistent with the numbers that you're using over time for multiple weeks, four to six weeks, and see what happens. Be consistent with your numbers before you try to adjust them. So don't be surprised if like this calculation is different than another one you've seen, or if you try three different calculators today and they're a little bit different, it's okay. It's a starting point, you can, you're consistent with it, adjust based on results. So here's the formula I'm gonna give you today. You're gonna to take your goal body weight, and I'm gonna talk in a second about how to figure that out. Your goal body weight in pounds, that is very important. Do not do this in kilograms. Transfer your kilograms to pounds, goal body weight in pounds. You're gonna multiply it by either 10, 11, or 12. Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through this here a bit now. How to figure out your goal body weight. It doesn't have to be the exact weight that you want to be. You might not even know what that weight is, and that's fine. We're using goal body weight in place of lean body mass. So think of a weight that when you're that weight, you're fairly lean, and that's the weight we're gonna have you use here. So goal body weight is a weight that you are fairly lean at. Now, if you have a lot of weight to lose, you don't have to pick a super lean number. You can pick an intermediary number and shoot for that. Otherwise your calories might get kind of low. So let's say you have two, you're 200 pounds and you want to weigh 150. You could use 150 as your goal body weight, but you could just as easily use 170 as your goal body weight. And that might be a good comfortable amount of calories for you to start with. Do not spend a ton of time figuring this out and fretting over the number. You're going to pick one, and you're gonna use it. And again, you're gonna adjust based on results. So if what you find is that you're 200 and you pick 150 as your multiplier and it's too few calories and you're struggling to stick with it, you can change and you can up your calories or vice versa. Let's say you, you go for 180 and it's too many calories and you're losing very slowly, even though you're being consistent, you could adjust. So keep that in mind, goal body weight. Now, how do you pick your multiplier? If you're quite active, pick this number, okay, 12. If you are totally sedentary and or if you have a lot of weight to lose, pick this number, okay? If you're somewhere in between those, you can pick 11. That's how you'll choose there. So you'll pick your goal body weight in pounds, multiply it by 10, 11, or 12. That gives you your total calories. Let me give you an example. Let's say your goal body weight is 150 pounds. You multiply 150, times, and I chose 12 here, let's say this person is fairly active, they are not sedentary, they don't have a ton of weight to lose, they have a moderate amount of weight to lose, times 12, 1800 would be their calorie target. Now I will say, I like to use a calorie range. I don't like to give a person just a single number. So we could give them the range 17 to 1800 calories here, for example. Then you have this buffer, and you don't feel every day like I have to hit 1800 on the nose, or I didn't do it. So give yourself a range around this number. That's how you're gonna figure out your total calories. The next number I'm going to have you figure out is how many grams of protein you're going to be eating daily. Really easy calculation. We're gonna have two numbers here. To figure out your protein, you're gonna take your goal body weight, the same one that you decided on for your total calories. You're gonna take that goal body weight in pounds. Remember, that's important. We're not talking kilograms here. Goal body weight in pounds. You're gonna multiply it by 0 0.72, okay? You're also going to multiply that same number by 
okay? So goal body weight in pounds, let's say you're, you're 150, that's your goal body weight, you'll multiply it by 0 0.72, that's 108 grams. 150 times one is 150 grams. That right there, 108 to 150, is your protein target range. You wanna shoot every day to fall somewhere in there. Now, if you have not been typically eating a lot of protein, and I will say almost every one of my one-on-one -on -one clients when they are new to me has not been eating anywhere near 100 grams of protein. Most women when they come to me are eating around 50, if they're lucky. It's gonna be a big change for you. Shoot for that low end, shoot for 108. Don't go less than it, work your way up to 108. Figure if, if this is your number, your low target, whatever it is, aim for that consistently. I'm going to give you a trick to figure out how to do that. You're going to take the total number. So in this case, it would be 108. You're going to divide it by the number of meals you're going to eat that day. If you're a three meal a day person, divide it by three. That is what you're going to make sure you get in protein at each meal. So 108 divided by three. I don't know what that is. Is it somewhere around 35, 30, 60, 90, 100? It's around, it's around 35, right? You'll make sure you hit that number at each of your meals. You will plan your meals based around that. Okay, how am I gonna get 35 grams of protein at breakfast? How will I get it at lunch? And how will I get it at dinner? I suggest you figure that out the night before. Pre-log it in your log. Start with the protein. The calories you have left over once you've hit your protein target, that's what you can use towards fat and carbs. You start by getting your protein in first. It takes real effort usually to figure out like how will I get that amount of protein in. Another trick I'm gonna give you is you don't need to find a million different protein sources. It's not about like protein fluff and um, protein brownies and protein ice cream. You could do some of those, you don't need to do those. What you need to do is take the protein sources you're already eating and just eat more of them, right? So if at dinner you easy, usually eat chicken and you're getting like two to three ounces, have four or five or six ounces. That's the easiest way to get more protein is just increase your protein portion sizes. This does necessitate taking calories from somewhere else. You're gonna take them from the carbs, you're gonna take them from the fats to get this protein in. It's really important to get this protein in so that you feel full, which is really important when you're dieting, and also so that you keep your muscle. We want you to lose fat, we don't want you to lose muscle. If you wanna look lean and toned, you've got to have your muscle. So you now know exactly how many calories you're going to eat, and you know how many grams of protein you're going to eat. So how do you track them? You can use just pen and paper, and then use Google to search for calories, and you can write it all out. I do have clients who do that. Most people prefer a little more technology because it makes the process faster and easier. In that case, choose an app. My Fitness Pal is a good choice. Lose It is a good choice. They're equally as good. There's not one that's better. I get asked a lot if one is better. They're not. I have people who use both. I use Lose It and I use Lose It because years and years ago I started using it. And once you input all your food in there, what you're gonna find is it gets really fast because all the food you typically eat, the meals you make, the recipes you have in there, they're already entered. And once they're already in there, you don't wanna switch. So that's why I usually Lose It. That's just what I started with. Choose one of those two. Most of my clients tend to pick my fitness pal. I'm gonna tell you some things about using that app. If you choose to use it, you're gonna set your calorie goals now based on what they give you because they're gonna give you some. They might be very different than the ones you just figured out here with me today. I want you to take the numbers I gave you today and input those manually. It's very easy to do. You're gonna hit the button at the bottom that says more. It's those three little dots. You're gonna hit that. You'll go to goals, you'll tap that calorie, protein, carb, fat goals. There you'll be able to enter in a target. You will only be able to enter in one. Remember I told you to set a range? You're not gonna be able to set a range unless you upgrade to the paid version. You don't need to do that. Just set your lowest calorie target there. Okay, so that's your low target. It's set in there. You won't be able to change it for various days. Then you're gonna set your protein target. It's in that same area where you go to goals and then you go to protein. What you're gonna notice is you have to set that based on percentages. So you're gonna use the percentages and you're gonna to get to the point where it's very close to the number that you came to. It might not be exact. You might not be able to get it exactly. Get it as close as you can, no worries. And then what you're gonna notice you have to do is you're gonna to have to adjust the carbs and fat ratio till it equals 100%. It has to equal 100%. And again, it doesn't matter what you put the carbs and fat at because you're not going to track them. You're not gonna be paying attention to them. So don't worry about the targets for that. Just get your protein target set. 
Okay, once those things are in there, you are almost ready to go. There's one other thing you need to do, and it's very important. You do not want to be taking into account your exercise, your calories burned on this app. We want you to be burning calories by moving a lot through the day. We want you to get up, get your knee up, move around, walk. We want you to be doing that. You can be tracking your steps. I track my steps all of the time. It's a really great way to go. But what we don't want you to do is connect that number to this number as far as calories. My fitness pal will be prompting you to eat those calories back and you'll likely be eating back your calorie deficit. It's a big mistake I see loads of people making. So in order to not make that mistake, I want you to do two things. I want you to go back to the main screen on my fitness pal and you're gonna tap on that more button again, those three dots, and you're gonna find steps and you're gonna make sure you disconnect it. If it's connected, you wanna turn that off. There are also choices on that same screen to like connect your Garmin or connect all the different devices. Do not connect any. So don't connect anything new and turn off them tracking your steps. Track your steps separately. Okay, this is really important so that you're not eating back those calories. Don't worry, those calories were already factored in when we factored in your activity level. Remember you chose between 10, 11, and 12? That was factoring in like, do I sit a lot or do I move a lot? So you've already figured your activity level in. We're not gonna eat back how much you burn. Those numbers are just gonna be way off anyway. Watches, um, the treadmill, all of those things are good for figuring out like how much have you actually moved? How many steps did you take, for example? Um, they can be good for figuring out your heart rate. They're not good at figuring out how many calories you burned, so let's not make that mistake. When it comes to tracking your calories, being accurate is important. If you eyeball, you will likely be over your calories. Eventually, you're gonna get to the point where you can eyeball really, really well. To do that, spend a portion of time, a couple of months, weighing your food and measuring your food. So let's talk a little bit about this. What's better, weighing or measuring or both? Should you be weighing your food raw or cooked or does it matter? And then I have a trick to show you for measuring things um, like peanut butter and yogurt, kind of liquidy things. I'm gonna show you a great trick for doing that really easily. When it comes to measuring your meat, should you be weighing it raw or should you be weighing it cooked? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you what's most accurate and then I'm gonna tell you what I think is most practical to do. So the most accurate thing you can do when it comes to weighing meat is to weigh it raw. So I'm gonna show you. Here's a chicken breast. I have it on my scale here. And I'm going to weigh it. I'm gonna weigh it in ounces. It is 6.9 ounces, okay? 6.9 ounces of chicken breast weighed raw. I'm gonna come over here and cook it for you and we're gonna see how much it weighs and we're gonna talk about why it is. So I'm cooking my chicken breast, just cooking it plain in a pan, sauteing it uh, with some spray pan. Not typically how I cook my food. This is just for example's purpose to show you the difference between the same meat, what it's gonna weigh once it's cooked, versus raw. I usually would season my meat. I'm cooking up what was 6.9 ounces of raw chicken. And now, I'm going to take that, what was 6.9 ounces of raw chicken, and re-weigh it. And it's now five and a half ounces of chicken. It's important to note, that is now not raw chicken. So, when you use your entry, so I, I did some figuring while I was cooking the chicken. The 6.9 ounces of raw chicken was 235 calories. If I now took this five and a half ounce piece of chicken and logged it as raw, it would be 187 calories. But what just happened over there is I cooked out a ton of water, which is factored in in the raw measuring, the, the raw log, right? The raw entry. So a piece of cooked chicken for this amount is not 187 calories. Five and a half ounces of cooked chicken is actually 257 calories. That's a big difference. And remember, it's gonna really vary based on how much water a person cooks out. So I could cook this to within an inch of its life and have it be really dry, and uh, a lot more water will, will cook out. You have to, here's the really important part. The most accurate way is to weigh it raw. That's not always practical. You know, it might not be the one cooking it, or you just it just might not be practical. I very rarely actually weigh my meat raw. I most often weigh it cooked. 
The trick is however you weigh it, that's the entry you have to choose in my fitness pal or lose it. You have to, if you weigh it raw, choose a log that's raw. If you weigh it cooked, choose a log that's cooked. That's how you're going to be accurate. Most accurate for meat is to weigh it raw. Second best choice is just to make sure whatever entry you're choosing matches how you weighed it. You don't wanna mix and match there. This is important to remember with things like rice and pasta as well. And nobody eats these things raw, but you could weigh them raw and the calories are gonna be very different than if you weigh them cooked. So if you log that you ate a half a cup of cooked rice, that's 121 calories, okay? Half a cup of cooked rice. This is a half a cup of uncooked rice. This is 327 calories. That's a big difference. So if you took this, cooked it up, and then put in an entry for half a cup of cooked rice, you are eating way more calories than you just logged, which brings me back to that original point I just made a few minutes ago. The entry you choose needs to match how you weighed or measured it. I have a really easy way for you to weigh peanut butter and yogurt and those kind of liquidy things that are in containers. I'm gonna show you here now. I'm gonna bring my camera around so you can actually see the scale. So what I have done is set the full container on the scale and zeroed it out. So now it says zero. This is in grams currently. I'm looking for a serving size of 170 grams. That's supposed to be one cup. It's gonna be right here, 170 grams. Then what you do is you actually start taking the amount you want out and you look for a negative number to appear. So now it's minus 42 and I'm looking to get a whole serving, which is 170 grams. So I keep taking it out until I get to the serving size that I'm looking for. So you can see now I'm up to 114. And there we have it. Once the scale shows minus 170, I think I said 170, but I went to 171 here. Once it shows the number you're looking for, you know you have the correct amount out. I will say, as a little example of how using measuring cups versus grams on a scale is different. Take a look at this. It says on the package that a cup is 170 calories, okay? And as in a really important side note, I want you to notice, though it says on the container that 170 grams is one cup, and that is 90 calories, if I had used this measuring cup to measure a cup, look how much is actually in there. That is not a cup. If I had even gone straight to the top and flattened it off, it's more than the grams of 170 grams. And if you happen to use a rounded scoop, you're not even close. But take a look at that. Supposedly, the serving size is a cup. If you weigh it, you will have a much more accurate amount. So weighing versus measuring. I will tell you this. Doing either of them is better than doing none of it. So if you wanna just, you know, Use a measuring cup and measuring spoons to measure your peanut butter and to uh, measure out your oatmeal, do it. It's better than not. Weighing it is even more accurate and they're not always the same. So measuring is a little more accurate. Use a food scale. They're very inexpensive. Use a food scale um, to be most accurate. But doing the measuring cups, measuring spoons thing is better than not doing anything at all. So there you have it, my friend. Exactly what you need to know about macros to lose weight. You know what to track, you know how to track it, you know exactly how to set your calories for fat loss, how to set your protein for fat loss, you know how to weigh and measure, what the most important points are to know about that, about using the apps or not using the apps, all the things macro tracking. If you liked this video, if it was helpful, if you want to know more about these kinds of things, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and leave me any questions you have in the comments, things you want to know more about, things that um, are on your mind about these subjects. I would love to help you out.